I'm from Iraq. I'd like to share a few encounters that happened to me in my old house. We had a small house, no bedroom for me, so all of us slept at parents' room. Also, terrorism was a thing back in 2005, so we all were scared. I'd stay awake all night on all kinds of scary sounds. Footsteps, things falling, etc. The sad thing is my parents never believed me. I also had this nice toy car that had a protective bumper I got as a gift from my aunt. The second day I woke up some piece would break off the bumper. Until three days later, the whole bumper is gone. Also, I was not the type of kid that breaks his toys though. On one scary night, I was awake as usual. Nobody ever believed me on that one. I saw two small white figures running above the closet. I swear to God it's so real it's glued to my memory. All of these above, but this last one will truly shock you. One night, the sounds got very loud that the parents woke up. Dad grabbed a lighter with his AK-47. It was from his army days. Shit got real. Remember, we live in a very stressful location with crimes and terrorism. He went to check it. He searched the house. Nothing. Oh man, it must be fucking ghosts. No wind whatsoever though, we live in the city. I was and still pretty sure that that house had something in it that really scared me. Fast forward 10 years later, we moved to our new house. A car house in a nice neighborhood. Violence is 99% gone. But here's the twist, ladies and gentlemen. Every single nightmare I have now takes place on my old house. That somewhat lives inside my head, just what the fuck? Because it was already demolished though after it was sold. I think nightmares appeared more right after it became equal to the ground. One of my many scary dreams involved me waking up in the house a few times. Also one of them is our old house replacing our new house which scared me shitless. Anyways, now it seems to have faded from my memory somehow. I recently had an amazing opportunity. I went on a student trip to Iceland. We had a minibus and an awesome guide who drove us around, told us history and regaled us with epic tales from Icelandic poems. We were on a whirlwind tour seeing as much as could possibly be done in a day. We stopped at a small Catholic church in southern Iceland. It was not on our itinerary, but our guide said it's her favourite place, so we stopped. It was a small white church on top of a hill. The view was spectacular, a clear view to the horizon in all directions, with some hills off in the distance. The modern version of the church was white with a steeple. It had a small cemetery to the right of the property, and behind and to the left stood the original grass-roofed church. Inside was a humble church with a beautiful mosaic of Jesus on the wall. We wondered about the small chapel while listening to our guide speak. I found myself in a corner where they had a small rack and prayer candles. I don't know much about the Catholic faith, and I found myself wondering why people lit the candles, whether they were sad or missed loved ones. What joy or sadness did those lit candles represent? At the moment I was overcome with emotion that was not my own. I wandered back outside and stood near the graveyard. I looked at the dramatic scenery again, this time with grief and sadness. As I took it all in, I also felt a sense of endurance and pride. My experience was interrupted by one of my travelling companions. It was time to go. I didn't really get a chance to process much while travelling. I cried myself to sleep silently in the hotel room that night. I asked our guide if people had experiences there, and she said no. I've not had an experience like this one before, nor have I since. I'm not psychic or clairvoyant and I've never considered myself to be sensitive either. But something shared with me that day. Ever since I was little, I would watch Ghost Hunters with my dad and a haunting. So when I grew up to be really into ghosts and the paranormal, no one was surprised. The high school I went to had a paranormal society that you had to be, I think, either a sophomore or junior to join. So the second I was allowed to join, I jumped on the chance. The club was run by our school police officer and had been, ar been around since probably 2012. I joined in, I think, 2015 or 16. 
And given his status as an officer and our club's good reputation, we got to go to some pretty cool places. One of them was an abandoned jail in northwest Indiana, the one Don Gillinger stayed in, also the site of the Public Enemy movie. And I think that location was my favourite. We'd load up into one of those smaller school buses at like 7 on a Friday and get there while it's dark outside. The jail's windows had cracks and it was very run down. The front part of the building was maintained as almost a museum, but once you were past that, it was just straight nightmares. The whole night we saw shadow figures and caught orbs on camera and just had a lot of fun. But at the end, I ended up getting a little gift, I guess. We were sitting in the commons area for the prisoners and I felt something really sharp go against my leg, hard enough for me to yelp. There was no scratch on my jeans though, but it stung. I figured I was just paranoid, but still told the officer what happened. He too thought it was strange. When I went home, there was a scratch across my leg. Maybe this isn't the scariest story, but it's one of my favorites. I usually like to just say I got stabbed in jail because that makes it seem more interesting. I go to a small Canadian university in Nova Scotia. I live in a townhouse complex with my girlfriend and our two buddies. My girlfriend and I sleep in the basement and our roommates on the top floor. Over the past couple months, we've all started to notice some spooky stuff. I have a handful of experiences that I'll just share a couple for now. My first personal experience happened just over a month ago. I woke up in the middle of the night around 3am and decided to go upstairs for a glass of water. As I'm standing in the living room alone, I hear what sounds like somebody breathing very heavily, almost panting right behind my back. I turn around to see nothing behind me and immediately freeze dead in my tracks. After questioning my own sanity for a second, I went up the stairs to see if my roommates were awake, but of course they were not. One of our best friends lives next door in an identical unit, and she also has experiences that are super creepy. She practically lives alone as two of her roommates did not return to school due to COVID. She told us that in the middle of the night, it sounds like someone is walking around her house and doing laundry in the basement. The laundry machines in these units are very old and make very loud bangs when you close them. The next experience happened a couple of days ago. My girlfriend, our neighbor and myself were all studying in the living room with our cat sleeping on the couch. One of our roommates was hung over in bed and the other was visiting his father. After about two hours of studying, I started to hear the door to the basement creak open, right around the corner from our living room. It happened quite a few times, followed by a couple of bangs and other noises. Initially, I thought it was the cat, and so did our neighbor as the two of us both noticed the noises. We then noticed the cat was right beside us, shedding an eerie feeling in the room. To top it off, our roommate came downstairs once he recovered from the night before and asked us about the noises, saying he heard them too. This last encounter happened last week. It was around noon and my girlfriend, neighbor, and one of my roommates were all on campus. I was studying alone in the living room and my other roommate was upstairs. I went to use the bathroom and closed the lid to the toilet so the cat wouldn't try and jump in. I grabbed the cat and walked out of the bathroom and within 20 seconds, it sounded like the toilet seat was slammed shut. I practically shit myself at that point and went to take a look in the bathroom. The seat was down as I had left it, leaving me confused as all fuck. Okay, so before I start this story, I just want to preface that I practice witchcraft and have been doing so for over a decade. In that entire time, I never had any issues with ghosts because I know how to protect myself. Or at least I thought I did. I'm not that familiar with types of ghosts or spirits, so if anyone knows what this was, please tell me. If you don't know, mirror locking is pretty much what it sounds like. Locking it like a door so spirits can no longer get in and out. From research, I found that they use mirrors to come and go as they please. A few weeks ago, around Samhain, or Halloween, 
I was talking to my coven about witchy things, and my one friend suggested that we tell our ghost experiences. I didn't have anything to contribute, so I just sat and listened to theirs. My first friend's boyfriend told us about how he was sleeping and woke up to the feeling of something pulling his soul through their bedroom mirror. My other friend said that she saw a face in her mirror, so I told them to lock their mirrors so it wouldn't happen again. The veil between this world and the next has been very thin this year, so a lot of people were having weird experiences in general. Since I do protection spells very, every so often, I felt like I was safe even though my mirrors weren't locked. My best friend, who's a Christian, doesn't really see eye to eye with me when it comes to witchcraft, also told me about a weird experience he had when he was sleeping around the same time. He apparently had about four sleep paralysis experiences in one night and felt like something was after him. The night after everyone shared their experiences, I went to bed. Nothing felt out of the ordinary. Then I woke up around 3am to get some water because I was feeling a little icky. I laid my head back on my pillow to try and fall asleep again. That's when I had an intrusive thought telling me to lock my mirror. Usually when I leave these intrusive thoughts, they're clairvoyant related, but I do admit that sometimes I don't listen. But as soon as that thought crossed my mind, a deep voice clear as day said in my ear, don't even think about doing that. My head shot around so fast behind me and looked directly at one of the mirrors I have in my room. Needless to say, I didn't sleep for the rest of the night. As soon as the sun came up, I started making blessed water, holy water but for Wiccans or witches, and wrote locking sigils on all of my mirrors. As soon as I was done, it felt like I was finally alone in my room, and somehow that creeped me out more than the actual spirit talking to me. I never met my dad's dad. Apparently he kept very quiet about his life before he had a family. Six kids, moved around Alberta and British Columbia and Canada before settling in AB. We don't totally know his lineage apart from a brother and maybe his father. But every now and again, my dad and his siblings would catch a glimpse. Him and my grandmother are Canadian immigrants, both living through World War II with my grandfather fighting for the Polish. Don't know much more detail about his active duty than that. My grandpa told this story to his children a few times throughout their childhood, so I'll try and relay it the best I can through my dad's recollection of it. We'll call my grandfather G from here on out. Go something like this. G boards a train somewhere in Poland. His history tells us the Poles got brutalized by the Nazis when they were invading. I think G was expecting to be traveling from a battleground that had been lost to the Germans to a home base-esque establishment. I apologize for my lack of war vocabulary. The train is filled with people, both Polish citizens and soldiers, and is moments away from departing. They were closing shops and evacuating. G notices there appears to be a disturbance coming from the train station entrance, and after a couple seconds, lays eyes on a group of Nazi soldiers encroaching toward the platform, guns at the ready. Right before they open fire and as the train doors are closing, a large white dog runs into the train car and tackles G to the ground. He was a pretty beefy man from I can gather, so it would have taken some serious force. Not a second is spared between G hitting the floor and the Nazis opening fire as the train pulls away. G waits for the carnage to stop before getting up and noticing that most people on board had been hit, with a couple dead. He doesn't have a scratch on him. After gathering himself, he looks around the cabin to try and find this dog, but it's nowhere to be seen. It wouldn't have had enough time to get off the train either, as the doors were closing as it was getting on. The way my dad remembers, my grandpa seemed certain it was a spirit manifesting itself as a big white dog that had saved his life that day. He wasn't a man that believed in the supernatural, so to hear this account from him carried some weight. If he had died, my dad and my five aunts and uncles would not have been born, not to mention myself. There are two incidents I've had in my life that I've never been able to explain and really are what have kept me interested in the paranormal. These occurred when I was younger 
the first around fifth grade, I think, and the second probably late middle school. To give more context, I'm nearly 30 now, yet I still think about these fairly often. The first incident happened when I was stretched out on the living room couch watching TV with our family wiener dog, Buddy, sleeping between my legs. On the end of the couch behind my head, we had a wooden end table. I'm just chilling when out of nowhere, Buddy wakes up trots onto my chest and starts growling at the end table behind me. I try to calm him down, still trying to watch the TV, but he persists. So I turn my head to the end table and all of a sudden it just starts shaking and wobbling around on the floor. Absolutely nothing else was moving around me, just the end table. I stared at it for several seconds, fixated and unable to bring myself to react or say anything. It stopped and everything was quiet. Needless to say, I got off the couch and went to my room, not really understanding what I had just seen. Fast forward a few years, and now it's my oldest brother and I just hanging out in the living room. I was on the couch again, and my brother was on a chair. Out of nowhere, his chair starts shaking so hard it's moving around on the floor. It didn't move a significant distance, but definitely several inches in every direction as it shook. I stared at him in disbelief, and he looked back. I think he yelled what the fuck, but that part's pretty foggy. And within 10 to 15 seconds, the chair stopped moving. Once again, absolutely nothing else in the room was moving during this time, so we ruled out any earthquake. And my brother was and is a heavy dude. Back then, he was easily 220 plus, and the chair he was in was one of those oversized ones where you could almost call it a love seat. I've never been able to explain either of these and nobody else but my brother and I felt shaking or had anything paranormal that we know of happen to them in the house. I had one other incident in high school but I can kind of try to explain away. I opened my bedroom door one night and my desk chair turned, it seemed fairly deliberate, towards me and stopped right when it faced me. I freaked the fuck out, grabbed my oldest brother and of course it didn't happen again. I tried to recreate it by opening the door quickly and the chair would turn slightly but I couldn't get it to move like it did the first time. So this third incident is a bit more iffy but still strange and stands out to me. My boyfriend reminded me today of an encounter I had told him a few years ago that I completely forgot about. This story happened about 10 years ago when I was still in high school. Growing up, my family always watched paranormal shows from Ghost Hunters to Paranormal State. My brothers were really into the paranormal and would drive past this old cemetery and take pictures. Both my brothers are older, so they decided to find a new place to see. This happened to be an old asylum. I will not say where because we were trespassing on the property. One night, my brother invited me to go along and I said yes. There were only four of us that went along this time. My brother, his boyfriend, their friend Kim and me. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. There's a long winding road in order to get to the asylum, which has multiple buildings and tunnels connecting each building. The first building we went into was the theatre. The building had the roof collapse at some point in time, so we could only stand in the entranceway. My brother's boyfriend brought a tape recorder to see if we could record anything. We had asked a bunch of questions but didn't hear anything while we were there. We listened to the tape when we got home and heard a little girl say, Hello. It's one of the creepiest things I'd ever heard. After the theatre, we were just walking the grounds and I kept seeing this white figure following the pathway. My thoughts were, I'm hoping to see a ghost so my mind thinks I'm seeing one. I just kept my mouth shut and did not say anything until my brother's friend, Kim, said, Do you see that white thing over there? Then I told her that I've been seeing this for a while now, but I just thought it was in my head or my mind playing tricks on me. We didn't really experience much more that night. I was thinking it was such a creepy place where horrible things happened to the patients there. The second time I went there was a few months after my first time. We wanted to go at least one more time before the renovations were completed for the haunted attraction the asylum would become. This would be the final time I would go. The moon was full or almost full because we didn't need a flashlight to see. 
This particular night was cold, windy four nights. We could not park our car in the usual spot, so we decided to park somewhere different and walk through the woods. This should have been the turn around and go home sign. I felt very uneasy as we started to get closer to the asylum. We started to walk along the walkways and realized it was that windy. The doors to the buildings were wide open. My brother kept insisting let's go in and travel the tunnels. I said I don't think that's a good idea since I was feeling uneasy and that it felt like that we were not wanted there. My brother's boyfriend and Kim wanted to go to the most haunted building. This building is where the teeth were pulled out of the patients if they bit the staff too many times. I stayed at the walkway with my brother. In about five minutes, they came running back, stating we need to leave now. There was a dark, shadowy figure on the walkway between buildings, and they had no idea what it was. By the looks on their faces, I believed them. This is not the scary part for me. We had returned home, and for about a month, I had the same recurring dream. I was a mentally ill patient, and my grandfather was feeding me. In my mind, I knew what I wanted to say, but it came out as babble and no one could understand me. I got frustrated and I'd cry. I'd then wake up and think that it's one of the most horrible feelings in the world. I also wonder if that's what some of the mentally challenged people face on a daily basis. I don't know if energy followed me home. As I'm getting older, I'm starting to think I'm sensitive to things. I've had some odd experiences in my life and still do to this day. I'm looking for advice about a few occurrences that my boyfriend's parents are experiencing. Now I've heard stories for a few years about their house and I experienced a few things there. They think it's grandma hanging around, but I do not since instances happened before grandma had passed away. The first big experience was when my boyfriend's mom, Nancy, came downstairs after getting ready for the day and found all the cabinets in the kitchen wide open. My boyfriend was living with his parents at the time, so she blamed him, but he was also upstairs and had not come down at all that day. Now I must say Nancy is very short and would not be able to reach the higher cabinets, which were wide open. My boyfriend's father, Tom, was upstairs in his office painting and didn't know what was going on. The story was shrugged off as a friendly ghost playing games. I had an experience where the Anali dolls were facing forward on a high shelf when I arrived. We all sat down for dinner and they were all facing away from us. My boyfriend pointed it out because I had looked at all of them when we first arrived there. No one had touched them, so we kind of assumed there was a child spirit being playful. I also had cabinet experience and witnessed it within seconds. I had been sitting at the kitchen table talking to Nancy and she was initially standing in the kitchen. She walked into the living room to do something and I followed her because we were still talking. Within five minutes or less, she walked back into the kitchen and most of the cabinets were open, like wide open, not halfway. We both looked at each other and said, well, the ghost is at it again. Now fast forward a year or so, my boyfriend and I are living together and he occasionally goes to watch his parents' dogs when they go on vacation. He usually spends the night. About three weeks ago, he had stayed there and heard what sounded like a knock on the front door at 2 a.m. He said he looked outside and saw no one was there, so we went back to bed. He told me the story in the morning and I told him I knew it was going on prior because his parents had told me that it happens to them at night. He was a bit freaked out he had one more night to stay there. I told him do not open the door for anything because you may invite something unwanted in. Last week, my boyfriend's father told me they were watching a scary movie about a haunted house and one of the pumpkin decorations flew off the fireplace mantle. I asked him if it just fell off and he said no, like it was thrown off the mantle. Well this weekend, my boyfriend's dad said he now he is scratching at night. I looked at my boyfriend and told him usually that's a sign of something evil from what I've heard and read. We had a maid from India. We always used to argue and have problems with each other 
and she would always threaten me. I always watched videos about Indians doing some magic and scary stuff, and my family wouldn't give her a picture of my little sister. She raised her, because they feared her using some sort of black magic on her when she goes back to her country. She lived with us for eight years, so she was kind of family. One day, we had an argument together, and she said she will show me what she would do at night. I was kind of okay, because I knew she wouldn't do anything. So I went to sleep. My house has a hallway. My room and my parents' room in front of me, both connected to my sister's room, which is a glass balcony, so it's a normal room. We can enter her room from my or my parents' room through a door connected. So my bed was on the end of the room facing the door, so I woke up middle of the night around 3am 3, 3 or 4am, and the light in the hallway was on, pretty normal. Used to encounter a lot of ghosty stuff, so always used to wake up at 3 to 4, but this time it was different. This time I woke up to three shadows emerging into the wall. Not like figures, but like three persons as shadows on the wall. So there's a shadow, but no person, if you know what I mean. Saw one at first. He was walking fast. Then he looked at me and waved his hand to another two that appeared right behind him. And they ran towards my parents' room. I was freaking out. Probably the scariest thing ever. Who would come to my mind? The maid. I got up so quickly and ran to my parents' room through my sis so I didn't pass the hallway and woke up mom. Mom then woke up still half asleep. I told her the maid did something to scare me. So she got up and took me to the maid room to show me she was asleep. Which I still till now don't believe that she was asleep because she was adjusting her sleeping position when we got in. And then I obviously couldn't sleep all night. About four years ago, I was asked to sit in this huge house. I've been there a few times before, never heard or seen anything. However, this time on my last night there, I clearly heard steps in the bedroom above mine. The house is detached, there's no way it was the neighbours. I tried to convince myself it's just the house settling, but the dog, who's familiar with every sound there and was also sound asleep, jumped out of bed and looked up like, what the fuck was that? It freaked me out, but nothing else happened, so I went back to sleep. Next day, I went home and forgot all about it until strange things started happening. I was renting a room in a house at the time and had the only key, so no way any of my housemates could get in. Just wanted to clarify. I was keeping my window open at night, but had the habit of closing it before leaving for work. Suddenly, I started finding it open when I got back. A few times my room smelled like men's cologne. Once, one of the photos on the sill was misplaced. Another time, the string I used to hang my curtain was untied and just hanging on one nail. I've checked numerous times before that to see if it's loose, but it never was, so I can't imagine it just randomly untying. All this went on for about two weeks when I was called to dog sit in that house again. Don't think anything happened while I was there, but when I went back home, it was all back to normal. Nothing else has happened since, except a few months ago. When I was picking up that same dog for a walk, the baby's pram started shaking like someone was pushing it. The babies were in it, but were facing me, and I could see they were both asleep and not moving. Once their mum walked into the room, it suddenly stopped. I asked if she believed in ghosts, and she was like, oh yes, you too think we have one? Turns out, everyone she had mentioned that to simply laughed it off but she'd often find her kids staring in the same direction and laughing. Or the dog would just go to a random spot and start wagging its tail for no obvious reason. She thinks it's her grandpa. Whoever it is, apparently means no harm, but was still a pretty freaky experience. Around two years ago, when we had just moved into our flat, Strange things started happening, and this went on for about a month. I won't go into much detail as it's unrelated, but it all stopped a week or so after the police discovered our downstairs neighbour who had been dead for weeks in his flat, and no one knew. Poor guy, may he rest in peace. Anyway, let's jump to the most recent events. It all started last Tuesday. It's in the evening when our vacuum window cleaner starts randomly turning on. 
At first, it's every 10 to 15 minutes, but the time span gets shorter and shorter. Anyways, my girlfriend and I are watching a movie and too lazy to deal with it, so we just keep it close to and turn it off every time. Then we start getting ready to go to bed and wondering whether to put the vacuum cleaner in the living room or straight in the bins outside. But as we're discussing, we realize it hadn't turned on recently. So we just cross our fingers, hoping it won't scare us shitless in the middle of the night and go to bed. On Wednesday, I wake up first and it's all quiet, but as soon as my girlfriend opens her eyes, it starts all over again. We wait for the battery to die and put it into the closet. On Thursday, which was also my girlfriend's birthday, about 4 a.m., I have a very vivid dream of walking into our bedroom and seeing one of the bedside tables tossed in the other side of the room and the other one shaking with the drawers being opened and slammed shut constantly. I wake up feeling uneasy, but don't think much of it. Then I notice the fairy lights above our heads are on, but so dim you could barely see them. I'm surprised as I put the new ones two weeks prior and we hadn't used them since, but whatever. Thought we might have turned them on and forgot them, so the batteries are running out. Girlfriend wakes up around five, I show her the lights, which at that point started flickering, and we decide we'll let the batteries die and change them later. In the evening, we had a nice dinner with a glass of wine. I drank white, she drinks red. Cleaned the table and went to bed. Around lunchtime on Friday, Our flatmate jokingly asks if we started drinking in the morning because there were a few drops of red on the counter and they're fresh. Like not dry or anything, but like someone spilled it just now. We cleaned it and moved on, not making any connection between those three events and why would we? So yesterday, I remembered to change the batteries of the fairy lights. I'm about to when I noticed the switch was off, but we did leave them on that night. Or so we thought at least. I asked my girlfriend, she says she hasn't touched it. I switched them on and they're as bright as they could be. So I start freaking out a bit and my girlfriend is like, maybe my mum is hanging around. Her mum passed away about three months ago. So I start freaking out more because she didn't know her daughter has a girlfriend and I don't think she'd be very thrilled. Anyway, I calmed down as after thinking about it a lot, I realised all of those events were somewhat connected to my girlfriend and not me. Maybe it was wishing for a happy birthday or something. Nothing else has happened since. I've never been one to really believe in ghosts or the paranormal. I always believed there to be a logical explanation behind any door alarm or flash of light, etc. Well, that changed when I was camping several years ago on a beach on the west coast of Vancouver Island. I was in my tent, fast asleep, having a dream. Nothing too notable there, but I woke up from the dream to something very strange. So much so, that I felt the need to write it into the notes app on my phone. This is what I wrote. Reading through what appears to be text from a book, as much as you can trust any 40-something years old, except for at 43, because at 43, something happens. Repeatedly reading that same text over and over about three or four times, and then out of nowhere, I'm woken up by the sound of a soft female voice, Derek. It should be noted that the reading of the text felt like a dream, like I was reading through a book, but the voice seemed to have been from outside the dream. It sounded like she was right outside my tent. August 28th, 2016, at just before 3 a.m. Now for years, I didn't think any more of this event, Until just recently, I picked up a book called The Haunting of Vancouver Island and found a chapter on a beach just around the corner from where I was camping. The author had an experience so similar, I couldn't help but get chills down my spine just reading it. His speculation was that the beach was haunted by the ghosts of the passengers of an old steamer that sank just offshore back in 1906, named the Valencia, where 136 people died, including 17 women, and 11 children. To this day, I still get goosebumps thinking about this, and it's really opened my mind to the possibilities of another dimension where spirits roam.
I work at a Walmart that's closer to a super center than a store. I had an experience with our store ghost and I've had several more since the first. I've never been a skeptic, but I still rely on practical evidence to base any claims or beliefs on. Since I was much smaller, I've always been sensitive to paranormal activity and creatures. I have a knack for it, I suppose. In any case, I digress. For background information, I think I need to explain how I know there could be an entity in the building to begin with. My father has worked at this store for over 20 years now. Farther back in his career as a Walmart employee, he and the whole staff were present for a dramatic death. An employee had been going through a rough breakup with an abusive boyfriend. She'd even go so far as to request an escort to her car every night for fear of her ex. This woman came to work and her ex showed up. When she refused to return home with him, he drew a gun. Not on her, but rather on himself. There in the parking lot, he shot himself and died instantly. This event was disturbing enough that most of the staff took a mental health day. My father did not. Now, as I work more during the nights than any other time, I find myself alone fairly often. Most of my work after hours is monotonous and tedious, making the shells look nice for the following day. My first experience was when I was putting things away in the garden centre. After 9pm they dim the lights in this area. It's the only place in the store that is left without tile flooring. It's also completed with metal racks instead of an abundance of shelving. Basically, it's already an uncomfortable space to be in by yourself. Now, there are two pairs of electric doors. One that leads outside to the back of the building, and one that leads to our greenhouse. Both are locked after 9pm, just as the lights are turned off. Under normal circumstances, they do not open. Not this time. I'm walking aisle to aisle in my efforts to put away returns. Tonight I have no headphones, so I'm just listening to music over the loudspeaker. My footsteps echo against the concrete floor, and every item I place on the shelves rattles. It's sometime during this back and forth that I hear the door slide open. Thinking a co-worker had opened it to put away some mulch, I walk out and looked around, ready to greet them. No one. I look about, and even check the door to find the button still in the locked position. Annoyed rather than unnerved, I go back to my work. On a trip to the cart, I froze. Behind me, the door slides open. I slowly turn around to see no one. Now I'm uncomfortable and not wanting to linger for any longer than I have to, I switch from a slow walk to an almost jog. I'm putting stuff away as quickly as possible when it decides to open and close much more rapidly than it should. I simply take off, telling myself I'm just tired. Turns out, they caught it all on camera and inquired about it. The parking lot suicide man struck the first time, and many times after. This Walmart in southern Colorado is known for more than its toilet paper outages and minor COVID-19 outbreaks. It also has a ghost. In this bit, I'll recount three experiences. I'll go in chronological order for these experiences, just for the sake of text flow. People at my store have worked there for ages, so, of course, they've had encounters with our suicide ghost, who I will henceforth refer to as Sam, for reasons that will be revealed later. Sam isn't normally too active when the store is bustling with activity. He's antisocial in nature, Tending to act out when his peace is disturbed by an employee later at night, or so I assume, from the time when encounters and experiences have occurred. One of my co-workers named Cindy happened to work back in HBA slash cosmetics at the time of this happening. She's a taller woman with a thin frame and tends to be quiet when on duty. She and Sam didn't get along very well. On this particular night, Cindy was stocking and zoning the lotion wall in our box of a cosmetic centre. She was very much alone and thought nothing of it, as she remembered this fact very clearly. She had told me that the music was off because the overheads were having maintenance done and it was eerily quiet. As she stocked a bottle of lotion from the top shelf, dropped two shells to her right. The loud thud scared her and echoed through the empty area. She simply restocked the item, thinking she had bumped something. That was until one fell from the top shelf where she had just come from. 
she shook her unease off as just typical nighttime jitters. Nothing else occurred for a while, but when it did, it was nothing to be sneezed at. Hands full of freight and at least a foot from the wall, searching for a spot for her lotion, she freezes when the whole top shelf starts falling onto the floor. Freight simply slides forward from the wall to wall simultaneously, as if being pushed from behind with a very long stick. The moment the first bottle falls, she drops her stuff and runs. She later told me when recounting the tale that she was crying and actually left work early. She had never worked back in the cosmetics that late at night ever again. As at the time I was to start back in that area for closing shifts, she warned me to always greet Sam and when he threw something to apologize. My father was involved heavily in this next encounter and actually didn't notice the happenings at all until a member of security questioned him and showed him video feed. This night, my father was putting up large signs which were to hang from the beams above our gondolas, the shelves on which freight sits. He was on one of our electric risers. The risers are anything but quiet, and when you're upon them, they sway with each step. These risers are already pretty nerve-wracking, so I don't blame him for not noticing. Anytime my father passed from the shelving area into the flat, the doors would open. We would assume the doors were active and unlocked. However, when the security associate checked the doors, they were off and locked. According to all recorded logs, they were locked at 9 p.m. and remained locked at night as my father had not touched them and was the only associate present until 2 a.m. This whole ordeal spooked security more than it did my dad. The gentleman had watched the doors open and close at varying speeds. If you know anything about these doors, they're set at one speed. Safe to say, security was unnerved. The last experience was mine, as I seemed to be my own hotbed of paranormal activity. Sam decided he was pissed off and didn't want me anywhere near his favorite spot at all. I happened to be zoning the HBO shelves and had just started, meaning I was in the shampoo aisles. I'm very comfortable in this area because I enjoy matching everything up. Something about the uniformity of everything by the end is simply satisfying. As I began zoning, customers trickled from the area, leaving me quiet, alone, and I hummed to myself. I did have my headphones in at this point. My audio started crackling, which has never happened before with this headset, and caused me to pause and reset the connection. Quite suddenly, they were dead, completely drained of power. I didn't even have a suspicion that Sam was around. He wasn't a thought in my mind. I assumed I hadn't placed the earbuds back into the case properly. Putting them away, I nearly jumped out of my skin as a shelf to my left jiggled. The whole shelf. It knocks many bottles over and they hit the floor with loud bangs. I assumed someone on the other side had bumped something, but only one shelf had moved. At this point, I didn't inkling I was being messed with by Sam. I put everything back nice and neat. I backed up to double check the wall when several shelves, all in different places on the wall, shook. This time bottles didn't just fall, several came flying off at me. Obviously, I was upset by this and yelled, Sam. Abruptly, it all stopped. Broken bottles upon the floor and me and Sam's fit. I spent a good deal of time cleaning up his mess and also spent the entire time scolding him for his horrible temper. I had many, many bruises after this encounter and was rather cross with the entity and his temper tantrums. I remember scolding him for days afterwards. Sam garnered his name from a manager I disliked. This manager has a temper and an ego, quite like our resident ghost. All will be well until suddenly he decides to throw a hissy fit. To this day, he remains Sam and for every moment after. Many say not to name an entity because it solidifies their presence forever. However, this fucker is going nowhere. Until next time. For as long as I can remember, I've had issues with sleeping. I would cry and scream as a young child about not wanting to sleep, which sounds pretty typical to every other kid, so that didn't faze me too much. But as I got older, the nightmares and fear of sleeping got worse. In the fourth or so grade, I vividly remember two night terrors that left me sleeping two hours a night afterwards. 
Only once the sun came up around 5am was I able to get some rest, but that's not the point of this story. Eventually, I was diagnosed with a sleep disorder, but things got much better. I still had some nights where I'd have so much fear of sleeping that I'd lay in my bed covered in sweat and shaking, but for the most part, all was normal. I didn't have the night terrors or utter fear of falling asleep for a long time. A few years ago, I was in university doing my undergraduate degree in a beautiful city on a lake. I decided to take a few summer courses. Given that it's mainly a resort town during those months, the rent everywhere was ridiculously high. Luckily, my second cousins offered me their summer home right on the lake for a few months while I completed my classes free of charge. I was beyond excited. The house was on the other side of the lake from the university and down a winding dirt road off the single lane highway. I had one neighbour to my right and three to my left, but during the first few weeks of summer, most of them hadn't arrived for vacation yet. At the time, my boyfriend, now an ex, thank God, moved in with me because I was already uneasy about staying in a large house alone in a pretty isolated area. Looking back at my childhood, I think I was pretty in tune with my senses and maybe hyper aware of, as my mother would say, things that go bump in the night. I always got an eerie feeling going into the basement alone because it was one of those walkouts that opened straight onto a porch and just a glass sliding door that separated the inside and outside. My first thought seeing that was, oh great, this is the first house I'd picked to break into. Just some shitty humour that I used to try and alle alleviate my fears. It didn't work. The first few weeks were uneventful. Nothing odd happened at all. When I was home alone or up late studying after my boyfriend had already gone to bed, I increasingly started to feel more and more uncomfortable, like something was watching me. I was hearing doors shutting, footsteps and random noises at all times of the day. But since I had such similar experiences as a kid, I didn't dwell on it too much. I mean, the house was older anyway. The night that shit really hit the fan was when the feeling of being watched turned into feeling like something terrible was going to happen to me. A very dark and threatening presence. Anyway, my boyfriend had already gone to bed and I was studying in the living room around 10.30 p.m. The feeling became so overwhelming that I basically said nope and went straight to bed and locked the door behind me. I couldn't fall asleep for an hour. My heart was racing and I felt like someone was in the house. It wasn't until I heard knocking on the front door that I decided to wake my boyfriend up and in a hushed voice, I asked him if he heard anything. He groggily woke up and said, no, it's okay, just go back to sleep. So I sucked it up, threw my head under the covers and tried my best to fall asleep. The next thing I know, my boyfriend is shaking me and whispering, wake up, what's the address to the house? I'm on the phone with the police and I need to know. Well, if that isn't a way to wake up, I don't know what is. So I quickly recited the address and whispered what's going on to my boyfriend while he stays on the phone with the police. They proceed to tell him that the police would be there in 25 minutes, the station's on the other side of the lake, but to call back if we hear anything else. Those 25 minutes were the longest 25 minutes of my life. I sat there shaking uncontrollably as my boyfriend began to tell me what happened. About 30 minutes after he dozed back off from waking him up, he jolted out of his sleep to hear what sounded like three hard knocks on the garage door. He then heard a door open and heavy footsteps moved into the kitchen. That's when he decided to call. By no means was he an irrational person. Little noises and things that gave me the chills never bothered him too much. So when I found out he had called the cops, my blood ran cold. The police came and proceeded to move through the house and check every room, finding nothing. They said there weren't any signs of forced entry and suggested it could have been a bear. We both knew it was inaccurate, but at this point we were feeling pretty stupid and didn't say much. They left and we were wide awake lying in bed, both still feeling uneasy. That's when my boyfriend told me it was the first time in his life that he thought there was no way to protect us. That really worried me because this guy made me feel safe despite many poor qualities. He was 6'3 and pretty jacked. We didn't sleep for the rest of the night. The next day, we were both pretty shook up, but he went to work and I went to school. When we both got home, he brought up the night before, saying he still doesn't think it was a bear. What kind of bear makes three distinct knocks and can open a door? We tried to rationalise the situation by saying maybe it was kids just screwing around, but we both knew it wasn't. The feeling in the house was still heavy and dark. 
I'd been having nightmares for about a week of an older man, missing teeth, climbing up the stairs and smiling in a sinister way prior to the night before. That's why this next part pushed me to my breaking point and I never slept in that house again. My boyfriend said that he kept picturing a man crawling, exorcist-like, with a smile when he awoke to the knocks. He felt that the man wanted to hurt us. I was shocked. His description, missing teeth and all, lined up with mine. As soon as I told him, he went white and told me that we needed to pack up an overnight bag and go to a friend's place. The next time we returned to the house, the feeling was there but darker. We decided to move out instantly. The only time I returned was when my mom and grandma came to help me clean up the house before giving the keys back to my cousins. I never mentioned it to them. I searched online to see if there were any incidents within the area, but I couldn't come up with anything. I didn't bring it up to my cousins because I didn't want to come across as ungrateful for a place to stay. But even today, I can still picture that man smiling and remember that feeling of dread and overpowering worry that I was in danger. I only very recently recalled this memory. This is the only time in my life that I experienced something like this. I've never ever hallucinated before either. Perhaps it can be explained, but I haven't been able to figure out how. Maybe you will. I live in Hawaii on the island of Kaui, and I'm a 28 year old male. Approximately 20 years ago, I was on the island of Oahu, visiting my family on my father's side. I stayed at my auntie's house with her rather large Samoan boyfriend. She was about five foot and on the chunky side. She has a daughter, my cousin, who is the same age as me and standing at an average eight year old girl's height. You'll see why this information matters. They lived in this neighborhood called Wilhelmina Rise on the bottom floor of a two story house. It was set up like a fairly spacious studio where the only room was the bathroom. Otherwise, you could see everything in the studio in its entirety, no matter where you were standing. There were two queen-size beds several feet from each other, one closest to the TV and the other closest to the back wall. I was sleeping in the bed furthest from the TV, on the inside, having the wall closest to me and my cousin was sleeping next to me on the outside. My auntie and her boyfriend were, of course, sleeping in the other bed. I want to say it was somewhere between 1 and 2 a.m. when I suddenly woke up. I don't know if I had to use the bathroom or if something disrupted my sleep, but I could see the kitchen when I opened my eyes. I propped myself up onto my elbow to see over my peacefully slumbering cousin. I was puzzled at first as something caught my eye. I thought, I'm just imagining things, as I began to rub my eyes and hoping to be rid of whatever was causing this potential illusion. I looked up from my hands, knowing it'd be gone because the explanation was that my eyes were just likely blurry causing me to see imaginary things, right? That's what everyone else would expect when something like this happens to someone, isn't it? But that isn't what happened, not in this universe. After rubbing the sleep from my eyes, I look up again and it's in the same spot as it had been. The next step is to pinch yourself, right? That's exactly what I did. Pinch, pinch, pinch on my forearm as hard as I could to where I had to rub the pain away. Definitely awake and that is definitely standing there. My eight-year-old mind was trying to make sense of what was playing out, but it couldn't. I can't explain the confusion I felt, knowing things weren't adding up when they should be. This doesn't actually happen, except it was happening and there was no explanation. Towering in the kitchen was what looked to be a male on the slimmer side. If you took notice to the description of everyone staying in the apartment earlier, You'll understand why it was such a brain twister for me. Who is that? I asked myself silently. It stood with its back toward me at the kitchen sink. I stared at it, trying to make out any sort of detail that should have been illuminated by the dim stove light that was left on. The longer I looked at it, the less sense it made. I began to realize that aside from it being in my kitchen, something was off about it. Why couldn't I see any details? Why can't I even see the clothing it's wearing or the color of its skin? It was as if it were encompassed by a dark, deep, shadowy black. It was a silhouette. What does that even mean? My eight-year-old mind had no idea. 
I didn't know that shadow people were a thing back then. I wasn't even thinking about ghosts and paranormal things at that time. I was clueless and didn't know what I was dealing with until very recently. The weirdest thing is that when I first looked at it, within that second, my half-asleep brain recognized it as my grandma, until I looked harder and made sense of where I actually was. That didn't make sense for a lot of reason, the main two being, she's my mom's mom, therefore having no relation to anyone here except me. She was still alive and well on my home island at the time. She didn't pass away until about a decade after this incident. After I glanced over at my auntie and her enormous boyfriend sleeping where they're supposed to be, I glanced at the front door thinking maybe someone broke in. From where I was, I could see the chain was still on the door. So was the heavy duty padlock, meaning the only way that the locked door's opening is from the inside. The only window in her place was still intact as well. My heart was pounding at this point and the figure still hadn't moved at all. I rubbed my eyes and pinched myself one last time, hoping I was dreaming. Please, I thought to myself, as I slowly started to lower my body back onto the mattress, keeping my eyes on whatever it was that refused to go away. Please keep us safe and don't let anyone see anything. I stealthily flipped on my other side to face the wall and pulled the covers over my head. I didn't care how hot it was. I was not going to see the face on this thing, nor was I going to feel, hear, or witness anything it ends up doing. I silently prayed more to my parents' God and had such fear and adrenaline coursing through me, I thought I would never end up falling asleep. I genuinely had it in my mind that something was about to happen to me. Miracles do happen, as after a millennia passed, I did indeed fall asleep through the rest of the night without any further disturbances. I don't recall what happened the following day, but all I know is something was out of place. No evidence of someone MacGyvering their way into the house, and no one else mentioned anything about what I saw. I did tell my dad's mom about this recently, and she genuinely believes that I'm sensitive to anything spiritual or paranormal. She has her reasons, but that's another story. For some reason, I still haven't been able to find it in me to agree with her about being sensitive. Maybe it's because I fear these type of encounters, so I consciously shut this stuff out. Maybe because I'm just too skeptical. All I do know is I'd like to never experience seeing a spooky spectral stranger in the middle of the night ever again. I recently moved to a new city about five months ago and therefore moved into a new apartment. For a bit of backstory on my apartment building, it used to be a factory but was converted to apartments about 20 years ago. In our little village, there are 10 apartment buildings in total, only two of which were part of the factory and the rest were built afterwards. There's always been a kind of weird vibe in our unit. You always feel like there's someone watching you. Both my partner and I have thought that we've seen things out of the corner of our eyes, only for it to be gone when we turn to look. My cat has also been acting strange since we've moved here. He was never a whiny cat before, and we hardly ever heard him meow, but now he does it constantly. He'll sometimes look like he's chasing something that's not there, and will go to a certain corner in our living room and stare for sometimes 20 minutes at a time. With us being on the third floor of the apartment, and the tenants below us having their temperature set high, we have a fan on most nights to keep ourselves cool in the bedroom. My fan does have a timer option, but we never use it. One night, it wasn't too hot in our apartment, so we weren't going to bother turning it on. But as I was laying in bed, scrolling through Reddit, I heard the sound it makes when it turns on and was blasted with cool air. I thought it was a bit strange, but didn't want to move to turn it back off. About five minutes after it turned on, it shut itself off again. This happened three times since then. We've also had our TV turn itself on and off and our tall lamp in the living room as well. I've had doors that I could swear that I closed open when waking up and our cupboards and drawers open as well. We've had instances where things have gone missing only to show up in the weirdest places. For example, I use a plastic cover that clips on the top of my cat's cans of wet food and keeps them from getting crusty in the fridge. After taking it off of the can to give my cat his food, I couldn't find it afterwards. I didn't search too hard to find it, as I didn't need it that night, because he had eaten the rest of the can anyways. 
The next morning, I was getting ready for work and found it underneath the bathroom sink in the cupboard of the vanity. My cat's room is across the hall and I would have no reason to store it in my bathroom. We've also had instances of pictures and decorations falling off the wall or off shelves. And I've also heard some questionable noises that weren't my cat as he would be in bed with us. I know it's not just me overthinking as my boyfriend has been witness to some of the strange occurrences which helps me feel a little less insane. If anyone has any theories to debunk these events or could just help me understand what's going on, that would be great. If it's something paranormal, it doesn't seem to be harmful at all. Just a bit frightening and annoying at times. So when my family built this house in the early 70s, it was all perfect. But then my great granddad died. Nothing much happened. When I was a kid, I had a small room and always felt watched while I was in there. One night, I even felt someone sitting on my bed. I was too scared to look at this person, so I just stared at my wall until I fell asleep again. That was when I was five or six. After that, I moved into another room. Nothing similar ever happened in that new room then. But recently, things started to happen. Objects started to disappear and I found them in various places. I saw shadowy people and figures. A few weeks ago, my mom and I had a strange and chilling experience. She came home from work and was on the first floor. I was on the second floor and heard her yelling, I'm home. When I wanted to open the door to the staircase, I heard a feminine scream. You know, as if someone would be in pain. I ran downstairs because I thought my mom was hurt, but when I saw her, she said, you didn't just scream, did you? I shook my head in fear. She told me she heard it from upstairs, but I heard it from downstairs. A few days later, I talked to my sister about paranormal stuff happening in our house. Turns out we both hear the steps that are sometimes in the attic. We thought it might be a raccoon at first, but then we listened to it again. They were masculine steps. They sounded like military boots. Since we all talked about it as a family, it got worse. I woke up a few days ago with the feeling of someone choking me. I always dream about death every night. I feel watched with every step that I take. I honestly don't know what to do anymore. We already had a priest coming here. We saged the whole house correctly. I'm thinking about just moving out with my sister and my mum. My daughter is nine now and has no memory of this, but we do. We moved into a new apartment when she was around three or four years old. I'm not sure when it was built, but the aesthetic was from the 70s. And even though it wasn't up to date, it was one of the best apartments my small town had to offer. Shortly after moving in, my daughter kept speaking and playing with who she would refer to as Chelsea. We all just went along with it, thinking she had an imaginary friend and it was a result of her being an only child. One day, my daughter was using the bathroom and I heard her talking to herself in there. I went to check on her and she was just sitting on the toilet talking. I asked her who she was speaking to and she said an old man. As someone who's witnessed paranormal activity before, this freaked me the hell out. Some time goes by and one night my daughter tells me some man was talking to her in bed. She described him as being a tall, skinny man with a cowboy hat. My husband and I were watching TV on a different night when our daughter was sleeping. We heard a little pitter-patter of bare feet on the wooden floor and assumed our daughter woke up. We looked toward the hallway and didn't see her, so I went to go check on her and I found her snoring in her bed. I got the feeling this was also paranormal, but my husband thought I was being crazy because he doesn't believe in ghosts. A few nights later this happened again, but my daughter wasn't even home. My husband followed the sound into her empty room. He still says it was nothing, but to this day, I believe it was Chelsea. If I bring it up to him, he'll get weirded out and tell me to stop talking about it. After a year or so, my daughter quit talking about Chelsea, but I was still something I would tell my friends about when they would come over. My sister brought her friend over one night, and my sister started talking about the experience my husband and I had and my daughter's old ghost friend. While she was telling it, the paper towel roll on the counter 
fell out of nowhere. We weren't even near it. Another time my sister was over, she brought my nephew who was three at the time. He was playing in my daughter's room when we heard him yelling. We went in to make sure he was okay when we saw him standing outside the closed closet door yelling at the door. What? What do you say? We asked him who he was talking to and he said a ghost. He never went in there by himself again because he was too scared.